We got to see a lot of attractive men in spandex unitards for months. But we're professional actors. We don't objectify, objectify men. My funny, funniest memory, probably when I fell asleep on the set in the middle of a memory, filming memory, because it was so emotional. And emotion is draining. And I fell asleep in between takes, only to find the director standing over me. When I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I fell asleep in the director's memory, hello. And I hopped up singing memory, which was a, I don't know, silly moment, but um, it's a lot of fun. The combination of our names, we call ourselves Rebby Wilchard and we believe that we choreographed um, some of the film because uh, in our downtime we would just work on moves together oh, for sure. and try to do them in the background of shots and it would just, just make us sneak laugh. It, in. it would just make us laugh, we'd do little dance moves and... Uh, oh, we went yeah. across Tom the Pepper back of frame. Tom would love it, he would love it. The yeah. back of frame, you know how cats when they get scared and they go Bleh! and then run around, run, yeah. run out of their tippy toes? We did that in the back of the frame once. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that made it happen. Some of it did, and yeah. you'll notice in the Jason Derulo song, That's there's that. a, it cut, cuts away to us. <laughs> and it's, that was, uh, yeah, not supposed to be in the movie, but And it, then it I kept it. walking, and she's still talking to me, but I'm behind the pole, so it looks like you're talking to yourself. <laughs> it looks like I'm talking to myself, but I was having a fun time with Robbie here. Yeah. The first one that popped into my mind was probably with James Corden who was very funny on set, um, but he, as his character Buster for Jones, we were doing the scene and obviously he's a cat who loves food. And so there's lots of food on set and he had um, a giant chicken bone, um, but he had to take sort of mouthfuls of it whilst he was singing. So they had like tucked a tiny piece of bread inside the chicken legs so that he could keep chewing on something. And as my character, Victoria, I was listening to what he was saying and I was very close behind him at the time listening. And I didn't realize, but I had my mouth slightly open and James Corden as Buster Jones spontaneously decided to spit the bread out and um, the bread went straight in my mouth. And it's actually made it into the film. That, so yeah, you can watch out for that moment. <laughs> right, well that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> that's what I say to you. <laughs> Um, I think it's hilarious. I had really a lot of fun the first three days <laughs> with the post in the picture. Never did I imagine that uh, it would be my most talked about photo that I've ever had when I posted it. Oh, that might have gone around. Is that cats related? Group text? I don't know whether it's just sexy related, isn't it? We've had um, some conversations with him about it at the bar last yeah, we night. <laughs> um, there's talk that it was a semi... <laughs> oh, fuck. This is from his mouth, though. I'm not talking out of school. It was a lot of fun. You know, the fact that Instagram took it down, like, continued the conversation. <laughs> um, um, but I had a lot of fun with it. Look, <laughs> we got to see a lot of attractive men in spandex unitards for months, okay? <laughs> Some people didn't Jason. know how to take care of them. Yeah, so, selves. yeah, uh, Idris Elba, um, Sarian McKellen, I mean, the list goes on, guys. But we're professional actors. We don't um, objectify. objectify men or um, stare at that area when we could clearly see the outlines of things. Like, as a dancer, you yeah. know if you're going to be in a unitard how to place oneself. Yeah, but some people, they didn't know, did they? No, they were yeah. new to that yeah. world. And um, so, yeah, it was great to work with Jason Derulo, basically. You know, you just gotta keep certain things in mind, right? So like, you remember that you don't have knees. So like, if you're on your hands and knees, you're just gonna look like a person on your hands and knees. So you have to be on your hands and feet. So it's a lot of core work. Um, always remember that you have a tail and you have ears on the top of your head. I think the first thing is the way they sense. Right? Yes, okay, yeah. So they don't look with their eyes. Um, cats' movement in their heads is driven by their ears, which are normally on the top of their head, so they're not here. So you have to kind of imagine you've got the ears and you, and if you hear something, like make a noise, Robbie. Hey. Like that. So you move with, with the ears or you move with the scent. The biggest thing I walked away with is using your senses of smell to lead you versus humans, we will lead with our eyes. Like we follow our eyes to tell us where to go. Or cats will use either their nose sense or their ears by hearing. So what I need you to do is to like, lead with just your nose and smell or your ears. Like they're always listening, which make you hold your head up to be like, 
like you hear the sound, follow the sound. And it makes you lead more cat-like. Well, I just use my shoulders. Um, that made me feel a bit more cat-like, so I'd start there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not natural to do it in public or, or as a dinner party trick. It's just more for the movie, that's it. We're both single. I don't think that would work out very yeah, well. You know, exactly, in the scene, so. exactly. See, both Did single. You see that Can you believe it? Wait till you see his dancing. Wait till you see and Rebel in All Her Glory. My <laughs> kitty, okay, <laughs> in this film. Wait till you see it, guys. Hit us up on the Instagram. You know where to find yeah. us. Not too long. We did uh, makeup for probably took about forty-five minutes. Um, that included obviously like the black dots on my face for the you know for the computer to map out my my feline face afterwards. And then we'd put the suit on, took a couple of people to help wire the suit up, and then we get plugged into a computer so that they could track all our movements for the whole day. The set is all real, like 90%, I would say. And it allowed us, you know, to really dive into this world and really feel like we're in another dimension. Um, in terms of our look, uh, none of our fur is real. Um, the coats that we had on were real. Um, but we had on green suits and we, it took us, you know, probably like 20, 30 minutes to get those on. Got used to it really quickly. I think it was more when we didn't have them on, we sort of forgot what each other looked like. Um, normally with like our hair down and a normal face. <laughs> I did take a bunch of pictures, but um, I, I didn't, we can't post it until after it's, um, it's out. So like I can't wait to post them because they're literally hilarious. <laughs> cat school, um, we obviously study cats a lot to see how they behave, um, especially thinking about all the things that as humans we don't have, so you know, like their ears in a different place and their nose and their tail. But yeah, it was very fun and we also had you know, like a cat behavioural specialist on set to make sure we were always being very feline. <laughs> cat, cat school is quite serious, um, but uh, I do remember that on set, we just had snacks all the time. So like they would just bring back bunches of snacks on these trays. And I'm like, well, damn, is this how the movie life is? Because, you know, when I'm shooting my video, I got to walk to the to the snack thing. You know what I'm saying? But they're just bringing like snacks every 10 minutes. It's, it's crazy. While we were on set, um, we had to use our imaginations of like having cat ears or having a tail. My character had a tail, but not everyone's did. So it's like, don't forget, you have a tail, Jennifer. Right, I do. So a cat would use their tail to move around. And then later, once we saw, you know, some of the finished product, we got to see our actual tail. Rebel was very funny, and she also improvised a lot of her lines, which was really difficult, because the rest of us obviously had to, we didn't know what she was going to say, and uh, we had to keep a straight face. Judy Dench was actually very entertaining as well, between takes, she'd be, she would always make us laugh. <laughs> the things that would come out of her mouth, Tom would just roll the camera, and she'd just keep going and going and going, and they get funnier and funnier and funnier. And I'm trying to, like, be a cat in the background, yeah. like, listening to it all, and it got to a point where I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I became such a human laughing at her that it was, um, <laughs> then I was like in my head, I was like, well, how do cats laugh? Or maybe I have a sense of humor, but it went down. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Tom Hooper was so collaborative in the, in the comedy and um, really allowed, allowed myself, and also especially James Corden, to, um, to really um, add, add some comedy because there's no jokes in Cats the Musical, but now there is. <laughs> If the laughter comes, I just allow it to come within the character. Um, uh, so yeah, there, there's definitely times where you struggle. I was just excited to be able to sit next to Judy Dench in my set chair on set. Like, this is Judy Dench right here, you know, that's crazy. When I was on set, I only spoke in an English accent. I, I didn't um, speak in an American accent. So a lot of people uh, actually thought that I was English. Coming here for the past 10 years, I've always been obsessed with the, with the accent, so I've always like uh, tried to mimic it every single time, and that kind of gave me a head start. During singing, though, there are some certain things that don't really sound right within an English accent, so that I would kind of flip over into American a little bit. Think about it like like how Ed Sheeran does. He like he sounds kind of like I'm an American when he sings, because um, certain soulful things just don't really match in an English accent. hours upon hours a day, but um, some of it is, is just go. 
And um, I think for my particular uh, role, it was a lot of just go. Um, <laughs> uh, Cause you know, he gave me a lot of freedom, which I thought was really awesome. And he knows when to allow a scene to uh, take its own legs and he knows when to rein it in. I think Tom Hooper is like, a, like the most class act that you can get and I'm a big fan of his work and I've always been, but even now, even more so, you know, I've, I was just sitting by him and you know, always kind of trying to pick his brain like a little gnat. Like, why did you decide to do that? Why, why did you do, you know? We had a whole rehearsal period before, so we worked on the steps and then obviously it was very different when you get to the set, you still have to take a lot of things into account, like, you know, the floor or the space you're in and just adapt to how it's going to be on the day.